my dad, as well as Coach McKnight, being tough on me when I was younger, prepared me to be a man. So uh, I'm gonna hop on that plane and I'm gonna see what I'm worth. It's tough. Over 100 plus people try out. It's the last chance for Division I basketball. Well, our next guest defied monumental odds to become the first scholarship basketball player in NCAA history to play with one arm. And now he's starring in a documentary about his life, and it's already generating Oscar buzz. Mm -hmm. Kevin Lau, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So we've got to talk about this documentary. Your story is incredible. <laughs> you were born with one arm, and you managed to make it all the way to the NCAA on a scholarship? Yeah, I had a uh, pretty crazy life. I was born on Friday the 13th, too, with uh, my umbilical cord wrapped around my neck twice. Wow. And I came out not breathing. The doctors had to revive me. And they said my arm saved my neck. So I joke, joke about how it was a good trade. Wow. <laughs> you now, defied eyes from the beginning. From the get-go. Yes, you've yeah. been fighting since the womb, <laughs> haven't you? So what made you decide to tell your story, and how did you go about making this documentary a reality? Well, uh, the director actually started filming me when I was about 16, 17, so he filmed me uh, real time in the trenches with me for four and a half years. Uh, and at the time, I was a high school player, and he didn't know that I was going to get a Division I scholarship, nor did he know the project was going to kind of string out as it did. Yeah. yeah. Now, you want to, oh, you want to take this one? Yeah. I'll take it. So <laughs> when did you realize that you were different? Because when you're a child, you don't really know, but I guess you start looking around and seeing that you mm -hmm. have an appendage or you don't have an appendage that other people have. So when did you realize that you were different? Well, at a young age, you know, it was hard. Uh, I was growing up in a broken family. My parents divorced and my dad uh, got cancer when I was a third grader. And I don't mean to, uh, you know, my be a goodness. negative Nancy, but uh, he passed away when I was 10. So... When I was 10 years old, I was a 5'10 kid with you know, one arm, and the red hair didn't help at all either. And uh, it The was, red it hair was, was the least of your problems, it my was, friend. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was uh, a rough childhood, but uh, you know, I was so blessed in my life to have so many mentors uh, and people that take care of me, my mother being one of them, uh, grandma being another. And uh, the first time I actually tried out for basketball was in seventh grade, and I got cut. Mm. It told me you know, it was a two-handed sport. You know, and at the time, I was doing pretty well in baseball as a pitcher. And in, in soccer and football, uh, but I was a little stubborn and really wanted to pursue in basketball after they told me I couldn't do it. Well, what made you keep fighting? Because you were surrounded by issues that other people would have just said, I give up, I can't, it's too tough. What made you want to keep going? That's a great question, too. Uh, you know, there's so many people out there, and it you know, sounds a bit cliche, but uh, when, when parents come with, to the games with their kids with disabilities and, uh, you know, and, and that time's about 200 and social media and the outreach, of inspiring people, uh, you know, they're looking to you as you're their hero, mm. you know. So in a lot of ways, uh, it, it really fuels me to be able to help others. And uh, the documentary was filmed for a course of four and a half years, seven year long project. Um, it's unbelievable now to be able to share my testimony life story to help mm. out people internationally, domestically, we're up for Academy Award this year. Wow. It's really surreal. <laughs> it's definitely a testimony. Yeah. But tell us how it was going through the story, because when you're playing basketball, what other kids mean to you? And after you got cut, at what point did you get back on the team? Yeah, it was uh, it was difficult. Uh, other opponents, you know, made fun of me, and you know, you, you walk on the court like I get to play the the disabled kid today. You know, I have the day off. You know. Uh, <laughs> So that's kind you're of the mentality. You're saying that would be, that that would be the reaction yeah. to you. Like, but oh, who's this one-handed guy going to come exactly. up in here like he has game? <laughs> gotcha. And yeah. then you would show them that you had game. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I progressed and kept getting better and learned to use footwork and use, uh, you know, my strengths to my advantages. And, uh, you know, by senior year of high school, I, I had quite a bit of media attention. I was in the Super Bowl edition of Sports Illustrated. And yeah, I got a, in 2007, Sports Illustrated yeah. called you the most exciting basketball <laughs> player that's huge. Uh, in the my Super goodness. Bowl edition. It was unbelievable. Wow. And not only that, I was in my, uh, my English class in high school, and I got a call uh, from an area code. There's no number behind it, and I picked up the phone. And they were like, this is so-and-so from the White House. Is this Kevin Lau? And I hung up on him because I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I was playing games. Are you serious? Yeah, I thought my buddy had an app or something. Uh, they called uh -huh. back, and it really was the White House. And they, were, they asked me uh, at the time, you know, would you be interested in meeting George W. Bush? Wow. And I was like, yeah, let me check my schedule. I'm like a high school kid, right? <laughs> let me see. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. I got other things to do. Football yeah, game. so uh, okay, I'll I, president. I flew out on Air Force One in San Francisco Airport. I spent about 20 minutes to a half hour with them right off the tarmac. 
Wait, and you were on Air Force wow. One? So you can't well, just... he walked off Air Force One on the staircase, and then I was on the bottom of it with my parents. Mm -hmm. And we sat there for a half hour while the media and all the cars and the Secret Service waited. It was a crazy experience. What I was went that back like? that night mm -hmm. in a basketball game, broke my leg, lost all my scholarship offers on the West Coast. Oh. Same day. And How that, do you go from such a high to such a low? That's my life. And I joke around about the Friday the 13th thing, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just my life. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very strange, and uh, fortunately enough, there's so much of that uh, to make a good movie. By the end of the, the film, you don't even remember that even happened. I mean, there's mm -hmm. that much, uh, you know, stuff within it. But again, you know, I'm very blessed to be able to mm -hmm. help others, and I do a bit of motivational speaking now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, how did that change your career after breaking your leg and lo losing your scholarships? <laughs> then what? I, uh, I had an option to go to Division II, Division III basketball, mm -hmm. or I could go to a prep school and try to redeem those scholarship offers uh, at a D1 level. And that's ultimately what I did. I went to a military school in Fort Union, Virginia. And, uh, you know, I played some really good players, McDonald's All-Americans, and uh, did really well against them. And, you know, I was still having a troubling time getting recruited just because I had one arm. It was a little bit of discrimination because it's never been done before. Mm -hmm. uh, so the kid, you know, behind me coming off the bench for me was getting a scholarship, and I wasn't even getting any letters at the time. Uh, so, you know, it was very, very much a struggle, uh, but I How did you get past that? You must have been really going through it, feeling away. depressed and all yeah, of that. Yeah, I mean, it, it is hard, and again, uh, you know, everybody has their own challenges in their life, uh, but, you know, with enough heart and perseverance, you, you really can't achieve you know, your goals you set out to. So walk us through how it actually physically works. So the right hand is what you dribble with and shoot with, and you catch passes with the left. Yeah. That, I, that's what I read. Is that correct? I, uh, my hand is absolutely ginormous. Yeah, it's massive. <laughs> <Look at this. laughs> I mean, it's like, it's wow. a joke. It's yeah, a joke. It's, wow. it's ridiculous. <laughs> so you can palm the ball pretty easily, which helps. Uh, I am 6'11", uh, not 8 feet tall, unfortunately. <laughs> close, <laughs> close enough. No, no, pretty close, close enough. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hit my head on doorways, so it's all the same. Wow. Uh, but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I use this to my advantage. It's all bone, so I kind of stab other players. I'm a little bit okay. <laughs> a dirty player. Okay. Uh, you but, play dirty? No. Oh. Never. Uh. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's, it's really in all the footwork, especially for a big man. Uh, I compensate with speed and athleticism and you know, just positioning myself for, for rebounds and, and uh, different, uh, different sort of offensive plays. I met Kareem Abdul-Jabbar a couple months ago in the city, ran into him, and I got to talk to him for a couple, you know, uh, you know 15, 20 minutes, and I was thanking him because I based my whole game off the hook shot. Mm -hmm. oh. I, you know, I gave him, he's like, he asked me the same question you did, that's why I bring him up. And I, uh, I poked him with this thing, and he's like, ah, God, man, that <laughs> thing hurts. <laughs> See, that can actually help on the court then. <laughs> it can, yeah. So, again, it's just using my uh, disadvantages to my advantages. Mm -hmm. Do you have a nickname, or did you have a nickname on the court? Uh, I've had plenty, uh, you know, Captain Hook, you know, this and that. But uh, people just call me k Lau for the most part, and uh, okay. the shot blocker and stuff like that. Now, do you come from a family that played a lot of basketball, was very active in sports? Uh, in sports, yes. Basketball, not so much. My dad was actually, he was six, nine and a half, but he was a race car driver. Wow. Uh, How do you, you fit know, in the car? That's always, I don't <laughs> right. know. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we were, we were predominantly a, a football family. Okay. Uh, yeah, Oakland Raider fans, unfortunately. But, uh, Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but your story yeah. has a happy ending. You broke it your does. leg you, mm -hmm. after meeting Bush, but then you rallied and you ended up going to Manhattan College on a full scholarship. Talk to us about mm. that story. My goodness. It's unbelievable. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, you know, again, you know, you, you really can't achieve, you know, whatever goals you set out to. And that's the, the goal I set out to do is to play Division I ball at that level. And, uh, you know, I was blessed to actually get the scholarship. And, you know, I don't want to give too much away about the film, obviously, but... Uh, uh, unbelievable time and a, an amazing journey and I've been able to help so many people you know again I if you were to give me a left hand today I wouldn't take it wow really w why I, would you not take it yeah uh, I came to that realization about a year ago I went to Uganda and coached mm -hmm. uh, the national team out there I got invited to go coach on their best court in all of Uganda which is an outside mm -hmm. court you'd find in the Bronx here uh, but these guys were so athletic you know between 20 and 30 years old, and they could dunk me on their back, but they didn't know what foot to jump off or lay up. Uh, so I was, in a way, like John Wooden of, you know, Uganda for a couple <laughs> weeks. Uh, but, you know, the time I spent there was really life-changing. You know, seeing all the adversity I had to overcome in my life mm. in comparison to what they have to come through was very humbling. And uh, at the end of 
the several weeks I was there, we played the film on a sheet on the side of like a, a shack building wow. to all these guys, and it was dead quiet the whole time. And uh, I was getting a little nervous, you know. I complain about little things, but uh -huh. these guys go through a lot. At the end of the film, these guys stood up one at a time, and they said something about the film. First guy stood up and said, Kevin, this is the best moment of my life. The next guy wow. stood up, said something, said something. I'll never forget this. A kid stood up. He's the team captain of the team. He said, nobody in this room knows this, Kevin, but I have leukemia. I have a tumor in the back of my brain, and the coaches told me to quit, and the doctors told me to quit, but Kevin, you never quit, and neither will I. Wow, oh that's and deep. it's moments so like those that make it all worth it. Wow, so what ultimately would you want people to take from the movie? Just, just those actual comments that you heard, what? Uh, you know, no, nothing's out of reach if you mm -hmm. want it bad enough. And uh, you know, you don't technically have to have a disability. Everyone has their own struggles. Uh, you lose a loved one, you, you have a sports injury, whatever it may be. Uh, you can relate to the story in, a, in one way or the other, mm -hmm. but you know ultimately, if if you really set your goals high, set your bar high, and really work towards it, you know it'll take sacrifice. You can really achieve whatever you like to. So, what's how your next goal? You, how hard did you work exactly? Mm, that's true. Like, how many hours did you put into making this a reality? Uh, one, uh, I was in a Sports Illustrated again, and they were talking about how I had to be twice as amazing. Uh, mm. I had to work twice as hard as any other player to get the same benefits because of you know, having a disability. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I want to not be boastful by any means, but yeah, I had to work really, really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and again, I had amazing coaches in my life and, mm -hmm. and different role models that really steered me in the right direction. That always helps. And now you're yeah. being the role model to so many people. <laughs> What's next for you besides the documentary? Will you go on to play more basketball? Yeah, I hope so. I uh, graduated uh, Manhattan College and I have a tryout with the Harlem Globetrotters uh, this upcoming year. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so, and I do motivational speaking across the country, colleges, business, nonprofits, and going to Philippines hopefully pretty soon. I know they just had a disaster out there, so mm -hmm. um, I've been. Uh, traveling quite a bit. It's an exciting time in my life. Well, we thank you for making one of your stops <laughs> here at Arise. You definitely so motivated us today. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Kevin. Hey, and good luck with the documentary. So Where can we see it, by the way? Uh, AMC Theater in mm -hmm. Times Square. All right. Okay. We'll be checking it out. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.